Hey, what's up, YouTube? Uh, this is Car Addict. I'm going to real quick uh, show you how to deal with the ethanol uh, flex field tuning with a uh, K tuner. On data, you can't do it on a base Civic, only the SI. However, I believe there's a beta version out you can get from Hyundai on their forums or something, and then you can do it. Uh, I still don't think you can adjust boost, though, only ignition. Uh, but anyways, here's how it works with K-Tuner. All right, so we are in K-Tuner, and here is the tune I'm working on. Now, it's not finalized, and I have not made 12 revisions. I started at 1.08. Uh, because I was tuning for my three and a quarter inch mass airflow sensor housing, and I was at one point, excuse me, I was at 1.08 on that. And when I started doing the flex field, instead of going back to 1.00, I kept going from 1.08. That way, I know where I started with the flex field based on what map scale. If I need to go back and look at other tunes previous. I'll know where I switched over. So anyways, um, I would not copy my work here because I am no tuner, and if you blow something up because you copied me, well, I told you not to. So that disclaimer aside, here's how it works. Um, in disables, you got to disable the ECT-related codes because you did hijack the uh, wire to the ECT2 plug to get the signal to the ECU. And then in Flexville, you need to enable it. All right, so when you're in here, um, this is not how it comes. I did change it uh, a little bit. Now, my pump gas around the corner is 11% ethanol. So basically, I had been tuning myself for E11. And then when I enable Flexville, E12 would add 6% fuel. And then my long term would learn a negative 5 to negative 7 pretty much because it was adding 6% fuel when it was already pretty much dialed in for that E11. Uh, I originally was going to do this um, zero because that's what I was tuned on and that way it would just make it easier. However, I started thinking eh, it seems like the cheating way a little bit so I added a uh, 4% because 6 to me seemed like too much because I'd always heard you need to run about 30% more ethanol than uh, gasoline and when I did my math it did not come out to 6 it came out more towards 3% obviously at 10% ethanol so I figured at 12 I'll go to 4 um, and then tune for that since I was already tuning my boost and ignition at E11 I'm not adding anything there. I waited until E25 to add. So now I'll show you how the tables work. At E25, I'm adding 30%. And then at E37, I'm adding 55%. For ease of the mathematic end of it, I'm going to be pretending these are 50%, and I'll be pretending I'm running E37. Um, and I'll tell you right now, the reason I picked 55 is just because. I had no other reason than just because. So, under main, ignition base. This is mostly untouched from a factory map. Uh, a negative number is after top dead center. Positive number is 14 degrees before top dead center. So, let's just pick this cell for example where at this cell the engine is targeting or the ECU is targeting five degrees before top dead center. Ethanol ignition adjustment is the one you modify um, and right there I am targeting an additional two degrees. However remember I'm targeting fifty percent of this so if I was running that E37 I'd be adding one degree to the five degrees and I'd be targeting six degrees before top dead center. I'll just do a couple more examples. Let's start with a negative three. So right here we are targeting three degrees after top dead center. Based on my adjustment 
I'd be adding 5.2, but 50% of that, so I'd be adding 2.6 degrees to negative 3. So instead of targeting 3 degrees after top dead center, I'm targeting 0.4 degrees after top dead center because it's still negative 4. And let's just do one more to try to pound this mathematics into your mind or the whole concept. Right here we're targeting 0.7 degrees before top dead center. Right here I'm targeting half of that, so say 2.7 plus 0.7, 3.4 degrees before top dead center. So I'm going to try to find one that still ends up being an after. 6 degrees after top dead center. Plus 4.4 degrees, half 2.2. So you take 2.2 degrees and add it to negative 6. You're at 3.8 degrees after top dead center. There's the ignition. Now I have the boost the same, which you don't have to. I just, again, for no reason, like I said, I'm not 100% tuned. So these could very well change. The way the boost one works, we'll go back. It's a little different because you can't follow the cell through the tables because the boost target uh, adjustment based off ethanol goes off of throttle position. So you can't go cell by cell and see exactly where you're going to add exactly where. This is probably more aggressive than needed. Do you really need to add three degrees timing? 70% throttle at 3,000 RPMs? Probably not. So if you want to end up uh, only tuning wide open, you don't care about adding boost to lower throttle openings because really, if you leave all these at zero and you don't add boost when you don't really want to, like if you want to go fast, you're going to punch it. And basically it'll be up here. So maybe you only want to do 90 to 100%. Down here, you don't want to add boost, because you add boost, you drink more fuel, you get cheater fuel mileage. Just add the boost here. So at 90% throttle, I'm adding 50% of 5.5. So uh, 2.7 pounds, let's just say. Now I'll go to my boost target on normal. So say in the 100% throttle, at 4,500 RPMs, I end up at this cell, 22.2. Well, if I add 2.7, I'm now targeting 24.9 PSI. And you possibly, most likely you do not need to taper your boost adjustment and your target because I'm already tapering off so I'm not trying to target as much boost at redline because that tur uh, turbo is tiny and have a higher tendency to knock. So I'm already tapering it on the main table. So even if I targeted a flat line here and targeted this 5.5 all the way to redline, my overall boost would still be tapering. So like I said, again and again and again this is not my final final thing so don't judge me and don't copy me just trying to show you the way it works K-Tuner has a write up on their website like I've also said but people still ask sometimes so here you go anyways that I hear my family walking in so before we get interrupted I'm gonna end it that is how it works alright so I just got done editing that video and realized I cut the GoPro off a little early so I'm putting this in here to say thanks for watching uh, please subscribe and give you a little glimpse at what I might do with the Civic it all depends on how big of stones I got and uh, just if I can get myself to do it I could always chicken out you never know if you see that stray as narrow road right there uh, that scales to about 20 miles right there and uh, now you can probably tell it's Mexicali to San Felipe. If anybody's done that drive, you know what I'm talking about. There's this uh, elevated section of the highway that 
I mean, it's just a straight shot for a long ways. I don't know, about 20 miles straight, and there is, like, some dips in the road, and uh, so you definitely want to go down at once, turn around, and haul ass. I wouldn't just fly, fly the first time. I mean, I always drive pretty fast, but I'm going to have my kid, so I'm going to have to actually go all the way to San Felipe, drop her off with my parents, turn around, and then haul ass, but... So anyways, we're going to see what kind of guts I have and how fast I'll take this uh, Civic up to. Stock brakes, stock suspension. So that's not really a recipe to do high triple digits in a Civic, but, well, you're never doing high triple digits in a Civic, or at least not mine. So, low middle triple digits. Uh, we'll see. So, I mean, I got a commenter that said he's done 145, I think it was. I imagine it takes quite a while for a Civic with intake downpipe and a tune to hit 145. It's got to stop pulling up there. I mean, even at 100, 110, it is pulling pretty good still. So maybe I'll be surprised at how quick I can get up there. Maybe I'll shit my pants long before 145 and uh, hit brakes. Um, we will see. Anyways, later.